Hello, everyone. My name is Dominic, and uh, it is my pleasure to share my experience studying in HQST and living in Hong Kong with you today. Just a quick introduction about myself. I spent the first 18 years of my life in Poland, and then I came to Hong Kong to pursue my university studies. So here I completed my bachelor degree, master's, and currently it's the last year of my PhD. So as already mentioned, I am a recipient of the Hong Kong PhD fellowship. And in terms of research, uh, I focus on biostatistics, uh, in particular, uh, development of statistical methods in computational proteomics. So before diving into uh, the study life, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about what it feels like to be an international student in Hong Kong, because it's a very important aspect that I'm pretty sure a lot of you are curious about. So um, I believe that Hong Kong has a lot to offer. And if you are willing to explore, um, you can find amazing nature, uh, a lot of interesting cultural and historical sites, as well as amazing food. Um, so when you come to Hong Kong, you may realize that uh, it's not a uniform environment. I believe it comprises two parallel worlds. One is local, the other one international, and they're quite different. So when you come to Hong Kong, it's important to make both international and local friends to be able to go out together and experience both of these worlds. Uh, so as a potential new student here, uh, especially if you come from the other end of the world, uh, you may experience something like a culture shock. So at the beginning, you're in the honeymoon phase when you are super excited about everything and you want to explore. Uh, but after that, you may have a period of frustration because you observe differences that um, don't agree with your previous lifestyle. So that may last for a little bit uh, up to the point when you eventually learn to adapt and accept the Hong Kong lifestyle. So just please be aware of that. And this is a normal process and just focus on enjoying your journey here. So when it comes to the support of my HKUST life, uh, here there are a lot of different aspects. So the first one is the research one. And uh, as I mentioned, uh, my work is mostly computational. So I used a lot of, uh, I got a lot of help from the Information Technology Services Center. For example, I used their high performance uh, computing cluster to do my uh, computations and also got some support for uh, cybersecurity issues. We cannot think only about the present, we also have to plan a little bit for the future. So for that, Career Center is an amazing resource we have. They organize a lot of workshops about practical things. For example, how to write a CV, how to write a cover letter, uh, polish your soft skills. And also they provide one-on-one -on -one consultations to discuss some more specific questions or needs that you may have. For example, uh, I really benefited uh, from those consultations uh, in terms of de deciding what I want my career path to be, so focusing on research. Uh, but all of this would not matter if you are not uh, in a good mental space. So I believe that nowadays prioritizing and acknowledging that mental well-being is extremely important. Um, we should focus really on that. And HKVST also provides us support in that dimension. So we have the Counseling and Wellness Center that organizes events and workshops, giving you tips how to uh, manage your uh, mental uh, well-being and um, have you know different tips for self-care and so on. Also, if you have some deeper questions or need extra support, we have a team of amazing student counselors that can assist you in this journey. And finally, uh, HKUST is not only about research and academic related stuff, it's also about having fun. So on campus, you can find a lot of student societies that you can join. And the, the, I mean, the interest that you may have, you can definitely find something. So uh, in my undergrad studies, when I had more time for these activities, I was a member of University Philharmonic Orchestra and Archery Club. So that was really fun. And now moving a little more into the financial aspect. So as I mentioned, the HKPFS is very generous 
uh, scholarship. And it provides us not only with that basic scholarship that Hillary and Alex already mentioned that can cover our cost of living, transportation, tuition, and so on, but also recently UGC provided HKPFS awardees with extra support for research-related expenses. So I used that to purchase a couple of um, very useful equipment for my lab. So it ranged from very simple things like computer accessories, uh, monitors, keyboards, upgraded PCs, but also some more heavy duty stuff like network attached storage devices or very powerful servers. Uh, and of course, uh, the scholarship includes the traveling uh, scheme. So uh, you are getting some money from the HKPFS as well as the general uh, research travel grant fund uh, sponsored by UGC. Uh, so thanks to uh, that fund, I was able to attend a couple of international conferences and present my research to peers around the world. And for example, I went to CIGES in Spain last year, and this year I attended a conference in Singapore and very recently in Jeju Island in South Korea. So I also would like to mention here that the whole process of applying for that funding and then reimbursement is super smooth. You are assisted at every step of the way so that um, you can just focus on your uh, research plans on your conference and not worry about the financial support, which I find uh, really amazing. So finally, uh, since we are talking about so many uh, advantages of the HKPFS, uh, I'd like to give you a couple of tips on how to become a successful recipient, how to make your application successful for HKPFS. So first of all, you really need to start early because it takes time to answer all the questions, craft your application, uh, figure out what you need to include. So since the uh, deadline is December 1st, I believe now is the right time to start. And that brings me to the second point, which is having enough time to get good references. So it's really good if you can reach out to your past supervisors or people who can testify to your research potential, your soft skills, your abilities that may be useful in your uh, RPG studies to support your application. Uh, I believe it can really make a difference because when you write the application, it's your side of the story, but having external party to uh, also uh, have their say about uh, your abilities is extremely important. But nevertheless, uh, you need to tell an interesting story about yourself. I believe that uh, a lot of you are international students or potential applicants. Uh, so you probably already have a lot of unique experiences that people in Hong Kong or maybe in this part of Asia do not have. So try to emphasize that. Try to present yourself in the best way, in the most unique way. And in this part of application, I believe and this is just my personal experience, it's not uh, some official recommendation, but I think it's nice to refer to the HKUST values, for example, the Kendo spirit, diversity, inclusiveness, global vision, because then you show that you not only have those qualities somewhere in your CV, but also that you are aware of what HKUST is about, what it values and what it wants to see in their students and the community they form. Uh, and then, obviously, because it's research related application, you need to prove that you have the research potential. So you really need to show you have some track record of either past research experience or at least the set of skills uh, that will, uh, will enable you to take on new challenges during your research journey at HKOST. And finally, do not underestimate the power of personal relationships. Uh, so. At the beginning, when you are deciding which program you want to join, which research group you want to join, uh, you might want to find out the best supervisor, the best professor. So for that, uh, it may be very useful for you to go online and look at the HKUST faculty profiles, which have all the necessary information for you to start the contact. So the email, the phone number, also what is the research uh, area currently uh, worked on in the lab. So once you contact the supervisor, try to present, make a good first impression, show that you are not only an excellent researcher, but also a good team player, that when you join HQST, you will become a very uh, good lab member. Uh, there will be very peaceful uh, co coexistence and very supportive environment uh, in your group, and you will be a part of it. 
uh, because I truly believe that uh, establishing good personal relationships and uh, maintaining them during your research journey can make or break your PhD. So uh, these are my tips and my experience of studying at HQSD. Uh, I hope this information will be useful to you uh, during your application process. And good luck with your application and hopefully see you soon at HQSD. Thank you.